Okay, welcome to part one uh, of this tutorial series. In this video, we're going to talk about the YouTube API and give you a few examples of that. Um, and then we're going to move on to creating the dynamic image. And we're also going to be caching the result uh, locally uh, to avoid calls to the YouTube API, partly just to be nice to them. They don't want so many calls to get the same information. Um, and partly just to make it a bit faster. We're going to be updating um, every 10 minutes, so 600 seconds. Um, so if like a lot of people visit view your signature at once, or they view a page where you've replied a lot of times, there won't be that many calls to the YouTube API, there'll just be a lot of calls to a local file, which is a lot faster. Okay, so um, I've just deleted all the PHP code, so if I open up our browser, ignore that, and hit reload, uh, you see we get a blank HTML page. Um, that text you just saw was actually the raw response from the YouTube API. I was just testing it a bit between the demonstration and this part. So, sorry about that, and I'll explain it as we get to that point. So, uh, going on to our code now. Oh, sorry, file structure. That always comes first. Um, we're just working with this single file. Um, yeah, so this file is obviously like the file that you would upload to your web host somewhere, and then you'd use the URL to this file inside the image tag, BB code image tag, IMG, square brackets, you know how it goes. Um, and these two fonts are going to be used by this file to make up the image. Now I'm not going to be like putting these up for download anywhere because I think they are like, well I don't own the rights to them, they're copyrighted. So if you want to like find, I mean you can just google like free TTF fonts and loads and loads come up. I think the web website I got them from was like one of the first few results. And this is the same font. Um, they had like a bold version, underlined version, an italic version of each font. I think combinations of those as well. So um, yeah, I just got a bold one on a standard version because then, um, well, some of the image text we're going to make up is going to be in bold. Um, bear in mind that if you um, don't uh, want like to use an image, you can use the same skills that we're going to be talking about to just like get static text. So that's the thing. This image file is the same file I have open here, and it's the same one I've got open in my browser here. Yeah, so that is what you'd put in the URL part of the image tag on the forum if you were using this as a signature image. Um, the idea behind it, by the way, is just to advertise your channel basically. Um, so you can show people what your most recent video is and go click it, go to my channel, you can have it linked to your channel or whatever. So uh, let's get on with the code. Um, the first thing we need to do is get the contents of the um, YouTube API response for what we want basically. The specific part of the YouTube API we're going to be using are the RSS feeds they provide for various things. More specifically, um, for a specific user, they should provide an RSS feed of their uploads, which is very useful for us. Um, this, luckily, is uh, public, um, which means we don't have to deal with authentication, as for some reason that's a complete nightmare with the YouTube API. You basically have to download their PHP uh, library to use, and, well, I haven't looked into it in too much detail, to be honest, but it looks horrendous. Um, I think you need the Zend scripting um, sorry, the Zend uh, PHP, what's it called? Framework, that's it. Um, which, to be honest, I don't really like using because it's clunky. Anyway, let's get on with what, what we're doing. I think I've said that about four times now. So, we're going to use the file get contents function. Uh, as you may or may not know, um, the file get contents function um, is used to get the contents of a local file and then it just returns it as a string. Um, here we're going to be getting the contents of a URL, which is acceptable as well. Um, if the server, your php.ini setting is enabled, URL f open setting is enabled. Um, if it is, this will work. If not, you'll get an error message. So what we're going to do is just to demonstrate this, we're going to get the contents whoops, of my website, like so, and then we're just going to output that to the screen. So now if I go to our page and hit reload, you see we get my directory listing, which is sort of strange in a way. Um, to view the page source, um, you see that we've just got the full HTML source of my directory listing script. So um, that should demonstrate that you can actually get the contents of a URL. 
Um, I probably should have used a slightly simpler example, but never mind. Um, so let's just go back to our code. Um, obviously, we don't want my website. We want the YouTube API site response type thing. Um, and I've looked this up before starting the video. Um, they have loads of documentation on the API. It's very useful and technical. So if you're interested, you can go and read that. And there's a lot more information you can get just in uploads. You can get like um, your like channel views, your subscribers, all kinds of st statistics. I mean, you've probably seen those sort of YouTube statistics suites that you can download or buy. They're usually written in sort of some language. Um, and you can sort of get all your information from there instead of using the YouTube site. Um, I think you can also upload videos, but I'm not sure about that one. Anyway, the URL we're going to be getting the contents of is gdata.youtube.com forward slash feeds forward slash API forward slash users. Then it's forward slash your username. So I'm just going to use my username. Um, and then it's whoops, forward slash uploads, like so. If I reload a page now, loading, loading, um, you see that slow load time there is what we're trying to avoid by caching the result, which I haven't mentioned, I just realized we're going to be caching the result, but I'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, this um, is a, uh, well, this is what my browser does when it encounters an RSS feed. An RSS feed is just XML um, data, so I view the page source, I believe it's all in one line, loading, loading, loading. Yep, there we go. We have the YouTube output all on one line, which is very awkward and hard to read. But that is an XML response. Um, there's no way we can really um, sort of show you that nicer, but that's just how they provide it awkwardly on one line. Luckily for us, again, um, the videos, most recent uploads, videos, whatever are sorted in descending order by date, by default, so we don't have to worry about trying to work out which is the most recent, we can just use the first one on this list. So at the moment, this is the first video that I uploaded and made public. This one here. And this bit is the title, and that's what we're after for this. I mean, the description is also there, but we're not going to be using that. Um, okay, so, from that, we need to uh, pass this response using, well we're going to be using the simple XML extension um, and more specifically a simple XML load string function. So instead of just outputting this we're going to define a new variable which is going to be XML and that's going to be equal to a simple XML object uh, and it's going to be the simple oops, XML load string. What that does is takes a string of XML data and turns it into a simple XML object. There's a lot more information on this available on php.net, but for this I'm just going to be showing you how to use it. If you want to know what it's doing, you can go and read up on that. So now if I just do print underscore r xml and reload our page, loading, loading, whoa, you see we get loads of data. Let's just view the page source to see it in nicer format. Okay, you see this is now a simple xml element object. Um, you can sort of think of think of this as an array of array if you like. It's not technically the same, but we can. Um, okay, so this is the raw data that's come back from the YouTube um, response. Um, sort of interesting information that you might want to think about. Uh, this is just something. All this is like rather boring stuff. Um, tells you the type of feed it is. Blah blah blah. I'm oh, sorry, it's not, a, uh, not an RSS feed, it's an Atom feed. Anyway, um, okay, so the things we are going to be interested by in this are basically only one thing. So if I just, uh, okay, what you've got here is the ID, which seems to be the URL. The last time this feed was updated, which is fairly useful, something else. Lots of other things, lots of other things. Links, just like, I don't know what these are. They tell you. Um, by the looks of it, um, not sure. Anyway, useless information. Some author tab, your username, I guess that would be. Um, generator is the YouTube data API. And now we have the entries. Now, this is the element that we're going to be concerned with in this video, as this, this entry, sort of array ish, um, oh, it is an array. Okay, this entry is an array, um, is 
an array of objects. I think is it? Hang on. Scroll down. Scroll down. Yeah. Okay. It's not. This entries array contains one object, and that is an object um, of your response uh, of your. Um, hang on. No. No. Yeah. Uh, this entries array contains an array of objects. Each object each object represents one video upload. So you can see here, um, like loads of information about the video, like this all the way down to somewhere down here is a single there that's that's the start of the second video like the second thing on the page so this is quite a, a sizable response we've got here and we're processing a lot of data I mean this is going to be like tens of thousands of lines I just scroll right down yeah I mean look at that it's like well it's 6,000 lines 6,600 lines so we don't want to be processing this every time and downloading it we get huge amounts of bandwidth used so another reason why we're caching it Anyway, this is the part we're after, the title. Um, see, the, the, the content is the description, and there's some stuff about links, like you could have it, you could like, if you're using not an image, basically you could link the uh, text to like a view page for the video. Anyway, like I said, this is the title, and this is what we want to get. So I'm just going to close this response now, and hide that because it's scary. So what we are going to do is define a new title variable. So I'm just going to set this title equal to the XML response and we want the entry sort of section. Um, by the way this is just how you access object properties. You can sort of think of this as the same as this for an array. Um, it kind of works like that. I mean you can probably, I think you can use it as an array anyway but we're not going to be doing that because yeah, um, and we want the zeroth object, and then we want the title property. So now, if I just do echo title and hit reload, loading, loading, you see we just get my most recent um, upload. If I hit this again, you see this is the amount of time it takes to load. It's like a good second in some cases. You don't want that on every p image load. So what we need to do is save this title string in a local file that we can reload um, sort of instantly almost. So what we need to do is create that file. Um, so I'm just going to create a new empty text file and we'll call it cache.txt. Uh, what? Okay, the script. I don't know how that got there. <laughs> Pretend you didn't see that. Going to rename this to cache.txt, and now we have a new uh, empty text file, zero bytes. I'm just going to open this up so we can demonstrate that it is being saved to it, and it's over there. there we go. That's the file we've just created. So now we need to see if this file has been modified in the last 600 seconds. If it has, we're just going to get the title from the file. If it hasn't, we're going to get the title from the YouTube API and then write it to the file. So we're going to do that using a simple if statement and the file m time function. What the file m time function does is take one parameter, which is the file name, and it returns the timestamp when the file was last modified. So we can get the uh, number of seconds, the, uh, like a go, that the file was modified by taking this away from the current time. So if we do if well actually let's just do echo time minus file m time of cache.txt if I just go to our browser I'm just going to comment out this YouTube thing to make it a little bit quicker to load and hit reload you see the file is now modified 90 seconds ago this is basically counting up because I'm not modifying the file if I go to our text editor and just hit save and then go back here and reload. You see it's gone back to zero because saving the file is modifying it. So that's what the effect we're going to be using. So now we need, well, I'll just uncomment these. We need to check if this, so I'm going to put this in brackets, um, if this is greater than 600, we're going to get the YouTube response, which is going to be that actually. So let's not. There we go. Else, I'm going to do something else. 
Okay, so in here we have now defined the title variable. So what we're going to do is put that title in the t in the cache file. So let's just do file put contents. Oh, okay, I'm going to have to stop here. Uh, sorry, I've just realised I've gone quite over time. Hopefully, let me upload it.